Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. We live in a world where we take, make, and waste. Like fossil fuel, we take crude oil from the ground, we make gasoline from the crude oil, and then we waste it by burning it once. And then we have to repeat that. It is non-circular. Fossil fuel cannot be recycled. Something people forget when we are talking about EVs versus ICE cars. Because when you learn how much resources an ICE car uses compared to an EV, it becomes completely ridiculous that we even have this discussion, as I will show you in this video. And on top of all of that, the argument about EVs will require so much mining, we have to dig up half the planet. I will also show you in one simple visualization how stupid these arguments are. The amount of precious metal that is mined is so small it almost looks completely irrelevant compared to the mining industry as a whole. So if you have ever heard these arguments against EVs, you are going to want to see this video and then share it with all the misinformed people out there so we can spread the word and fight all the disinformation Big Oil and Big Arto have been spreading for decades. And and show people the truth behind all the signs out there. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. We need more resources for an EV than an ICE car. This is the general conceptions from many people. But this could not be further from the truth. Yes, to build an EV, take more materials because of the battery. But that is not the end use of a car, right? You don't build it and then throw it away. No, a car's average lifespan is about 15 years or about 200 to 300,000 miles. And here, the ice car needs a lot of resources that is being dug up from the ground and burned once, where the materials in your EV's battery can be recycled again and again and again. And T&E have made a huge study on this back in 2020, I talked about it before. T&E is the European Federation of Transport and Environment. It is founded by various institutes like the European Climate Foundation, European Commission, Climate Works Foundations and many, many more. This is just an environmental federation and a collaboration of 23 European countries. So this is just to say there is no hidden agenda for them other than to fight for a better and cleaner future for all of us. And in their study, they show that an electric car outperform a diesel and petrol in all scenarios, even on a carbon intensive grid such as Poland. The evidence shows that electric cars powered with an average European electricity from 2020, and that has gotten even much better today, repay their carbon debt from production of the batteries after just over a year and save more than 30 tons of CO2 over their lifetime compared to their conventional equivalent. Electric vehicles that do high mileage like taxis and ride hailing services saves up to 85 tons of CO2 over their lifespan compared to a diesel. So the whole discussion about CO2 emission is also dumb, especially if we take into calculation in the not so distant future, we will be running on 100% renewable energy and the EV will then just get even cleaner than it is on today's grid. But that is just about CO2 emission. The most important thing for me is still air pollution in our cities. That is done by the ice car. We have thousands of people dying every year because of air pollutions in our cities. So on this argument alone, we need to ban ice cars, as we of course are doing in many countries around the world, so that's nice. But what about all the resources that are needed to be mined for all those batteries that are needed? 
Well, before I show you the visualization of the world's mining, keep this in mind as well as TNE also wrote in their report. The more EVs we will produce, the more battery and battery materials we need. However, with battery technology evolving all the time, less material will be needed to produce each kilowatt of an EV battery. From 2020 to 2030, the average amount of lithium required for a kilowatt hour of EV battery drops by half. The amount of cobalt dropped by more than three quarters with the battery chemistry moving towards a low cobalt content. And we even have new electrolytes for batteries that does not use any lithium at all, like sodium. Sodium is more than 12 thousand times more common in the natural world and CATL has launched its first sodium battery with 160 gigawatt hour per kilogram energy density and can charge from 10 to 80 in just 15 minutes so that's not bad most LFP batteries have an energy density of 180 watt hour per kilogram only CATL's new LFP battery the M3P battery have an energy density of 210 watt hour per kilogram and CATL says that they can get sodium battery to over 200 watt hour per kilogram, making them as good as LFP batteries. And CATL even says that they can use their already existing lithium battery production line to make sodium batteries, so no new expensive production equipment is needed. This is not in the far future. CATL is already producing this battery today, but this kind of technology will change the amount of precious metals we actually need. Like sodium batteries, we're not need lithium, nickel or cobalt. Unlike today's fossil fuel powered cars, electric car batteries are part of a circular economy loop where battery materials can be reused and recovered to produce more batteries. TNE expects that recycling of battery will reduce material demand for something like cobalt, for example, go down by as much as 70% already in 2035, and I think that's without counting in sodium batteries. This lines up perfectly with what JB Strabo have said that they already see an excess of cobalt in recycling as batteries that comes in now for recycling have a much higher level of cobalt than what is used today and LFP batteries do not use any cobalt or sodium batteries that will come out in big scale in the future as well or when we get to solid state battery that can be produced at high scale in next decade. So that is just to say we cannot talk about the future and look at yesterday's technology. We have to keep in mind that we are moving away from cobalt and need less and less materials in the long run for every kilowatt hour of battery we need. But what about all the precious metal we need to mine, especially in Europe where we don't have too much mining or oil extraction? Well, firstly, our current dependency on crude oils for cars dwarf our future dependence on battery raw materials. Although the EU is currently highly dependent on both oil import and battery raw materials, the dependency on oil is several orders of magnitude higher than the one for metals, even when looking at 2035 in a scenario where all new cars are BEVs. And when we recycle all the metals coming into our continent here from the US and China and elsewhere, we will also get less dependent on these materials from outside. But recycling will happen as this is going to be the most valuable ore on the planet. So it is not a question of if this will happen. This will be a gold mine as lithium is already looked at as the white gold. But let's take a look at the materials we mine. Here is a very nice illustration made by the British Geological Survey in 2019. So the amount will of course be different now as we continue to mine more of everything. But we can get an idea of the proportion of materials we mine. As you can see, there is a huge block right here, almost look like a skyscraper. And no, that is not lithium, that is an iron ore, where every little brick in this building represents one million tons of iron 
ore, which make up roughly 94% of all the materials we dig up from the ground. And roughly 98% of all that iron goes into the steel making. The remaining 2% is used for various other applications. And then there is the middle here, where we have the industrial metals. That is being dwarfed by the iron ore, but still some big piles there. And then we go over here to the technology and precious metals on the right there. And here we have all the goodies like lithium, cobalt, silver, gold, tin and many others. But all of these metals combined is about 1.3 million tons of materials. So only a little more than one of these small bricks in the skyscraper over there of the iron ore. So in 2019, the precious metal used in EV batteries only stood for about 0 0.0000 4% of the metals we mined. And that was all the precious metal combined, including gold and silver and so on, where lithium, that everyone is screaming about, only made up less than 0 0.00003% of the material mined. So even if we tenfold the mining, it will still only be a dust particle in the grand scheme of things when we look at the metals we mine. Even if we hundredfold, no, 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 a thousandfold, no, no, a ten thousandfold the mining of lithium, it will still be less than a percentage of the metals we dig up from the ground. We need to increase our mining of lithium by 100,000 times to even get to 3% of the metals we mine. This to say, the precious metal we mine is a speck compared to all the metals and other materials we dig up from the ground, including oil. The EV revolution will not mean that we have to dig up half the planet. And there is more than enough lithium to make this happen. There is even enough lithium just in the US to electrify the whole world. So according to the United States Geological Survey, to get to 100% sustainable energy economy, we need only less than 30% of the known resources of lithium. And as Tesla said, we find more lithium every single year. The more we look, the more we find. But the already known resources, according to the United States Geological Survey, we have more than enough. So the argument about not having enough materials is simply not true. This is not me saying this. This is not Tesla saying this. No, that is the United States Geological Survey, a scientific agency of the United States governments, and also the British Geological Service says this, and Transport and Environment are saying this. We have more than enough. And again, a 100% sustainable energy economy will require less materials, less resources, less than a fossil fuel one. Also because fossil fuel are so inefficient. Yes, 80% of the global energy comes from fossil fuel today, but only one third of the global energy delivers useful work or heat. That is how inefficient fossil fuel is. Most of the energy is wasted heat. And that is why we need so much more resources than if we just run everything on electricity made by renewables. And why the energy we need in a sustainable energy economy will have the amount of energy we need. This is a huge deal that not many get. As we usually see people talking about renewable energy and then use the energy consumption we have today and then try to calculate what would we need to get that amount of energy. But that is the wrong way of looking at it because we will only need half the energy when we are on a 100% sustainable energy. But the real game changer and what most people do not calculate in when they are talking about EVs versus fossil fuel is recycling. In the fossil fuel economy, we take, we make and we waste. And of course pollute the air and kill people. We have to get to a circular economy where we take, make and recycle. 
And that is something we can do with an economy run on renewable energy. And yes, electric cars filled with precious metal can be recycled, as the Circularity Gap Report 2023 is showing us. This is the way we need to go, and this is also what J.B. Straubel, Tesla, Transport and Environment and all the geological surveys are saying, recycling is the key. Even though EVs are already better than ICE cars without recycling, it becomes an absolutely no-brainer with recycling. The global economy is now only 7.2% circular. Our linear economy model has led to an overshoot of five of the nine planetary boundaries, meaning that the safe limits for our water and soil and air are being broken. So it is not just climate change we're talking about, but also biodiversity and many other boundaries for our planet. There are four key systems to reverse the overshoot. Our food system, build environment, manufacturing goods and consumables, and mobility and transport. The transport system are among the most impactful globally, heavily material intensive and high consumers of fossil fuel. They fragment natural environments, often cause harm to the ecosystem's function. These impacts aren't set to reverse. The demand for transport is trending strongly upwards all around the world and left unchecked, emissions from transportation system could grow by 60% by 2050. Transport is the single largest driver of oil demand worldwide, claiming around 60% of the total and accounting for nearly one third of the final energy use. So 60% of that 15.5 tons of fossil fuel goes into our transport. And it's not circular. It cannot be recycled. It is take, make and waste. So EVs are part of the 100% renewable energy economy, part of the circular economy. Fossil fuel are not. We only need to dig up a fraction of the precious metal compared to what we are already mining from the earth today. And we have more than enough of the metals we need. And in the question of EVs versus ice, an ice car consumes more than 300 to 400 times more resources than an EV over their lifetime. When we take recycling into the calculation. So no, it is not even a close race. That we even have a discussion is kind of ridiculous when one uses 300 to 400 times more resources. There is no contest. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.